Well hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. So I'm making a video that I thought I would never need to make um, and it's a what's in my camera bag video. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I've tested positive with COVID and I can't really get out, it wouldn't be fair to anyone. So join me and let's see what camera equipment I could share and you never know, you might get some hints and tips out of this video. So the other reason I'm doing it is because I watched a Peter McKinnon video, I don't know if you follow Peter McKinnon but he's he's been making vlogs for years on camera and photography and now he's, well he's um, so successful he's got a, a really amazing channel actually. However, I remember watching one of his vlogs and he had mentioned that he quite likes watching what's in my camera bag because he gets hints and tips for people and he can see what people are using and their bags. So, first off, I bought this bag at Christmas. It's a wee get so bag. Um, it's got an open top so that it allows you to roll it up and then you can put all your clothes and stuff in the top, which is something I've never really had before. And then the other reason I bought this bag was it opens up for the back. So you can zip it open for the back and then it opens up. And the reason that that's really handy is with my other bag, it's the back that sits on the wet grass and when you photograph in Scotland like I do, it's always wet. So when you lay your back on the grass, it gets damp and when you put it back on, you forget and by the time you get finished the day, you're soaking wet in your back because your bag's wet. So I thought, well, this is handy, the front can get wet, the back's protected, and I'll always have a dry back. So, what's in my bag? So I've got my cleaning cloths here, and I've also got a blower. So the blower I use to blow dust off the lenses, and these, they're just microfiber cloths. And the blower I use to blow dust off my end of my lenses the inside of my lenses, and then the mirror inside my camera. Okay, so my, my main camera is my Canon 5D Mark IV camera, and that's the kind of workhorse. Well, to be fair, it's the only photography camera that I've got. I've got the small Canon M50 that I've taken out and I'm filming with at the moment. And the Canon M50 is what I use predominantly for um, doing my videos, but I also use a couple of Gro uh, GoPros and I've got a GoPro 9 and a GoPro 10. Um, so on this lens, sorry, on this camera, I've got a 24 to 70 f 1.2 lens. I did have a 24 to 105 f 3.5, but I traded that in and I bought this lens because to be fair, I'm trying to cut the number of lenses down because the whole point of buying this smaller bag was to reduce the weight so when I'm walking up the hills it's just getting heavier and heavier with all the equipment because I've got I'm trying to cover the whole range with the lenses that I'm using now so this is my 20 40 70 mil and then I've got a 70 to 200 mil and again that's an f 2.8 and that gives me that range I've then got a two times extender that allows me to get to 400 mil using the 2.8 lens. And then I've also got a Sigma 50 mil lens, which I've only recently bought and I've never really used a 50 mil lens before, but this is an F 1.4 and oh wow, it's amazing. The quality, the feel, of this Sigma lens, it's actually quite designer -y. it's actually everything is so smooth on it, it works really, really well. And the quality of the images I'm getting, especially with the, the kind of blown out backgrounds at f1.4, the quality is amazing. And I've done some night photography recently up in Perth, and I'll show you a couple of those images just now as I'm talking. And they were taken with this camera about nine o'clock at night, it was really, really dark, and using f1.4 aperture setting, and it was just incredible. Really, really high quality, and one of the best lenses I've actually bought. 
So, in order to keep the weight down, I've actually only got three lenses in this bag. I've got the 70 to 200, I've got the 50 mil, and I've got the 24 to 70. And I've done that buying a smaller bag. This is a 24 litre bag. I didn't want to buy anything too big because my bigger bag's a 35 litre. And I come to realise that the more you've got, the more you put in your bag. And even when I bought this smaller bag to reduce the amount of equipment to help me ease the weight, what I'm carrying around, I still needed things like my filters. So I bought the filter bag and I, I shared with you in a previous video when I was at Shell Bay, why I bought the filter bag and how useful it is. It's just that I will also attach to my bigger bag because when I go on the trip, I'm going to use the bigger bag to go on the trip just because my laptop won't fit in this bag because it's too narrow. So I need to take the bigger bag so I can take my laptop with me as well. I'll have all my card readers that I'll need to take. I'll have all the USB charge cables that I'll need to take. So yeah, you end up becoming a pack horse. So <coughs> this was designed the idea behind buying this was to make sure I was cutting down the weight. And to be fair, it's brilliant. I've also got, it's got two side pockets, whereas my other bag doesn't have side pockets. And it's not really that helpful when you want to carry water, for example. So you're having to carry water in pockets and it makes the bag bulkier. Whereas this bag has two side pockets and it's easier to carry water. I've also got two mini tripods in this bag. I've got <coughs> my man Frotto tripod, which I, I tend to use for when I walk past the camera and that'll do walking shots. Or if I want to get low level images, then I'll use that mini tripod for low level images. My friend Alan had a, a tripod at one of the events we were at, and it's one of these Joby tripods, they're very bendy, twisty, and I bought one, and it's absolutely brilliant, so I really, really like this, it's one of the best things I've bought, it's, it's not good for my DSLR, because the DSLR is too heavy for it, but what it's really good for is the small Canon M50 and the GoPros, and I can sit it on fences, I can put it in weird areas, and it, because the legs are so grippy, it's just brilliant. So it's well worth it, and it wasn't expensive. I think it was only £29 off Amazon. So, yes, yeah, pretty good. And it's got a ball head. The ball head swivels. It's really versatile. And, yeah, it's been a great wee purchase. So, what else? I've, got, I've also got my microphones. I've got my Rode mics that I use for my lavalier mic. And I've got my receiver on the other camera. And I have them stored in the bag. So from a spare battery point of view, I've got tons of spare batteries. I've got about four or five Canon spare batteries for my DSLR. Because honestly, when I'm photographing in the snow, the batteries just run out really, really fast. As soon as they're cold, hits them, they drain quick. And then I've also got a couple of spare batteries that I use for the Canon M50 as well because it suffers as well when I'm out in the snow or the frost and it's really cold, then these batteries drain quite fast. So from a, a protection point of view, what I do is I always keep some small polythene bags handy um, because they'll go, if it's really, really heavy rain, they'll slip over the DSLR and the small camera and that protects them because if it's windy, I tend to, for speed, I use shower caps and honestly, these are amazing. I remember doing a shoot up at the Hermitage and I got absolutely soaked through the bone and at that time I didn't have anything to protect the camera, my camera was soaking. But Carl and my wife gave me a couple of bags of these shower caps and oh they're brilliant because they're so easy to put on the camera. In fact, if I just place that camera there, 
there you go it's just so fast and they work really really well I'm going to have to buy a couple more because the more you use them the elastic starts to stretch and it doesn't set in the camera as often so from a protection point of view for keeping the camera dry I use them in this bag I do have a professional camera cover in my other bag but the problem with that is it's quite bulky and doesn't really fit well in this bag because there's not a lot of space other than what you can see and from another protection point of view I've also got this <whistles> safety whistle so I always carry a safety whistle with me because you just never know because I'm up in the hills a lot another thing I tend to do is wherever I turn up if I see a stream or a burn or a river, I just follow it. And then before you know it, you've walked about a mile or two, you're in the middle of nowhere, there's no one around. And just in case anything happens to you or if you fall, at least you've got the whistle if you don't have a mobile phone signal. And hopefully somebody can hear that until you've got enough puff or you get too tired. So yeah, I always have a safety whistle with me and interchange them between the two bags as well. If, we're out, if I'm out with company, I also use walkie-talkies and I take my walkie-talkies with me as well. But I don't put the walkie-talkies in this bag. Um, I always carry them separately. And similarly with the drone, I use a drone as well. But again, because of the space constraints in this bag, I've got a separate bag that I bought when I purchased the GoPro. I bought the GoPro Hero 3. Uh, I bought the GoPro Mini 3 Pro. And it actually came with the bag as part of the offer. So I, I just use that. And then that just minimises the amount of kit that I have to try and squash in here. Plus, I don't want to put a, go, a drone in here because it might get damaged because there's, there's just enough in here that helps. So, yeah, this has been... Really, really helpful for me. It's um, It has reduced the amount of lenses I take because I was carrying four or five spare lenses with me all the time and my shoulders were getting hurt all the time, especially when I was climbing. And it was a few times I'd fell because sometimes when you lean back, the weight of your bag pulls you. And if you're on a kind of camber on a hill and you lean back, and you've got all that weight on your back, it does actually pull you over. So, hence why I bought the smaller bag, and that's why I'm trying to use a smaller bag. I will fluctuate, and I do fluctuate between the two, depending on where I'm going. So the other thing I have in my bag is my remote trigger. So if anyone's used the Canon 5D Mark IV, um, it's very difficult to get a wireless trigger and it doesn't really support it unless you use Wi-Fi when you're out. <coughs> when you're out and about, it's pretty tough to try and set that up. So I've got this wireless trigger that I, uh, this cord trigger that I use and it works really, really well. I've never had any hassle with it whatsoever. And if I need to do anything from a distance, then I just put on my timer, so I've got a 10 second timer there and that'll act as a remote and give me 10 seconds to get where I need to be. And these pockets, which are designed for a laptop, I just keep the, the screw adapters for my filters. I've got a couple of USB cables in here if I need to charge. And really that's it. Oh, I've got a spare. I've got some spare. <laughs> lens caps because if you're like me I lose these all the time so I've got a couple of spare lens caps in there and then I've got a couple of circular polarizers I've got a I've got a circular polarizer there and I've got a big stopper circular um, polarizer there just in case um, I have a challenge with my square filters because the problem with my square filters at time is using these square filters <clears throat> you can get quite a significant amount of vignetting so there's an example of a square filter and that's 
square filters. They're brilliant, but because you're putting a square on a circular adapter, you do get a lot of vignetting around the edge and that's like a dark shade. Whereas the circular polarizers, you don't get that as much. I must admit, I bought these this leaf filter system years ago and now they've released um, circular magnetic filters. So if those had been out at the time, I would have bought them, but that's what was available at the time and that's what I bought and that's what I continue to use. So, and try and maximize as much as I possibly can. So I usually carry two tripods with me. Um, this is my main tripod. Oh, I've had this tripod for about four years. This is my Manfrotto 005. It's carbon fiber to try and help reduce weight. It is, a, it is still quite a heavy tripod, but it's, it's well worked, it's well used. And uh, yeah, there's a few niggles. These poppers sometimes stick and you have to keep adjusting them. I had an instance where I opened the legs when I was coming out the van and it fell apart so I had to rebuild the insides again and put the seals back in. But yeah, other than that, this has been a pretty good tripod. The small tripod that I use for the vlogging camera is a small aluminium slick tripod that I purchased when we were away in Oban. Um, it's light, that's the main thing. It's not it's not fancy in any way, it just does the job and all I need it to do is to hold that small camera. And because it's so light, it's just easy to carry the two tripods around. So the challenge with this we mic is, when I sit it on the camera, as you can see, the sock, the wind sock sits right in front of the lens. So I didn't realize this until I went on a Stirling District Camera Club event, we did a photography tour up in Glencoe and we were at the foot of the Bucolette of Moor and we were filming um, the, the falls and when I got home and I'm looking at the footage it just looked like a wee grey squirrel popping up down in front of the camera so I thought well how am I going to fix that so I asked my son Sam who's big into designing and 3D printing and asked him could he make me an extension bar for my microphone that slotted into the GoPro? So what I do is I Sam made, designed and measured and printed this for me. And now what I have is this extension bar that allows the microphone to sit back behind the GoPro and it doesn't protrude over. And then that way you can't see the grey squirrel popping up and down in front of your lens anymore so big huge thanks to Sam and he did that in a few hours and it was absolutely brilliant and it works really really well so the one challenge with this mic that I don't like yep it's not an expensive mic and it is a directional mic however there's when you've probably seen some footage in the past especially our North Coast 500 um, videos when Carl Ann was talking to camera but as soon as Carl Ann turns away there's no peripheral sound coming so because it is, it is a one-way directional and I didn't read that when I bought it I actually thought it would capture some sign, sound at the side but it doesn't so we have to be really conscious now if we're using this particular mic that when you're speaking you're either speaking directly to it or you're beside it and you're talking directly beside it, but you have to be really close for it to pick you up. It's a shame it doesn't have a mic both ends and then that way when you're behind the camera, I suppose, I don't know how these things work, but for vloggers, that would be really, really helpful because you're not always facing yourself when you're talking. And that's where the lavalier and the wireless mics come in because it's great, you can be anywhere and it picks up. So that's the only downside that little Joby mic that I don't like is as soon as you turn away you can't hear it. And then the only other thing I've got here is with my GoPro 9 and that's the GoPro 10 there. What I then have is spare batteries because 
if you're using the GoPros for filming, I mean, you only really get about 25 to 30 minutes cut, uh, life out of the batteries anyway. So I bought spare batteries. So I've got this wee box here, and it also doubles up as a charger. And I've got three spare batteries in there, and that helps me in my long journeys, that if I've got the two cameras filming at any one time, because I normally have a camera hanging for the middle of the van, and then I've got a camera sitting on the dashboard, and then that way, hopefully, I've got everything covered. But, yeah, so... And I'm talking about that's why I have a smaller bag and I've got that much equipment. But I carry the GoPro stuff around in a waterproof box and I only take out what I need. So when I go on the trip to this remote Scottish island, I will have to take a big carry bag to store oh, all this kind of ancillary gear with me. Um, right, so the only other thing is I spoke about my laptop because the laptop um, doesn't fit in this one, but it does fit in the bigger one, which is fine. Because the whole point of buying this bag was more so that I could go around. If I started, what I wanted to start to do is, and try out as what you call POV photography, and that's point of view. So I wanted to walk around some streets at night, cities, and then have the camera strapped to my chest. And as I'm taking photographs, you can see the images that I'm taking as I walk along. And it's not as intrusive when you're in a busy city as walking about with a vlogging camera. Because to be fair, I'm still a bit uncomfortable when it comes to that. So, yeah. But we'll try all these things. We've got to try different genres. We've got to go to areas where we are uncomfortable so we can try it. Um, and let's see. All right, so I hope that... I hope that... Um, has been of interest and if anything you've had a wee nosy into my bag and you've seen what I've done the only thing I forgot to tell you was there's a wee tiny pouch there honestly it's hardly worth using um, I do sometimes put my car keys or my van keys in it because it does have a zip but it's not it's only big enough for that there's nothing else that it can be done and that's it there's only that side pocket that side pocket that front pocket that's all you get in this get so bag. Um, but to be fair, I bought it to make sure I don't carry too stuff. It is a bit lighter. I do like the practicality of having the hood so I can put some waterproofs in my wrap jacket in there. It just, especially when the, the warmer weather comes, it's going to be so much easier to kind of take your jackets off and store them because the other bag doesn't have it. And to be fair, I don't think I've come across a bag yet that caters for everything that you need. So, anyway, I've got to finish the video here. I hope this has been of interest to some of you. I hope you might have got some tips out of it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because that really helps on the YouTube statistics. If you haven't subscribed, please do because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, That'll let you know the next time I post a video. So thanks very much for watching and hopefully the next time I'll be COVID free and here's to the next video.